This is Christopher John Bjorkness. It is October 16th, 2023. I'd like to thank the kind, generous, and wonderful people who have been contributing to make this video possible. I hope everyone out there is as grateful to them as I am. Uh, without their contributions, this would not be happening. I'd like to thank Gary, Carolus, Wilson, Basma, Gregory, Kevin, Lance, Robert, Carolina, Mark, and Matthias. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm extremely grateful to you. Um, you made a wonderful uh, addition to my life. You've, you've helped me to get through this and to keep working at this. Uh, I'm following up on my previous video, Kabbalah of the End of the World. Uh, you may want to go back and watch that if you haven't watched that after you see this video. So for uh, 25 years, uh, I have been publicly warning people that there are religious and non-religious people who view the Bible not as prophecy so much as a script and a set of plans that they are following. They don't believe that God is making all of these things happen, so they're determined, determined to uh, make it happen themselves. So there are people who are pursuing the Bible as a script and a set of plans. This also includes uh, Talmud, Kabbalah, the apocryphal apocalypses especially. It includes the uh, Quran and the Hadiths and uh, Kabbalah, the Midrash, etc., etc., etc. And based upon that, I have been making accurate predictions publicly for decades. And uh, one of the things that I predicted was that the Israelis would cause agitations by threatening the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock. And on my blog, in my interviews, uh, in my books, I've been talking about this publicly since 2006. And in 2007, I discussed the fact that uh, Ehud Olmert confirmed what I had been saying in 2006, 2007, that Hamas was created by Israel. And uh, Omer came out with this because he got his butt kicked in the uh, 2006 Israeli-Lebanon war where Israel was once again bombing the crap out of Lebanon as it periodically does. Uh, it considers Lebanon to be Israeli territory they especially want to seize control of the Latani River in southern Lebanon because it provides a lot of fresh water that they need. And they have been pitting Christians and Muslims against one another in Lebanon for many decades. And they periodically bomb it and then they profiteer off of that bombing by rebuilding it. And this is only the latest iteration of this, but it may be the final one because they are trying to uh, fulfill all those apocalyptic plans that are part of their script. And uh, I talked about these things in my blog. In uh, 2007, I revealed the fact that Omer revealed in response to Netanyahu that Netanyahu himself was involved in empowering Hamas and that Israel had created Hamas. Um, my blogs were taken down. Uh, my website was stolen from me after I had just paid up for two years, but I was able to find one of the articles that I had linked to. And um, it is found on the Jewish Telegraph Agency's uh, website. Here's the URL. Uh, I linked to it back then. Omert Netanyahu spar over Hamas. Ehud Omert and Benjamin Netanyahu traded blame over the political ascendancy of Hamas. Omert accused his longtime rival of bolstering Hamas when, as prime minister in 1997, 
Netanyahu ordered the group's founder freed from jail to win the release of two Mossad agents caught in Jordan trying to assassinate a Hamas official. Um, if I remember correctly, I had linked to other articles, which I can no longer find. A lot of this has been taken down off the internet. It's been many years since I wrote about this. But uh, I had lots of proof back in 2006 that Hamas was created by Israel, and I had posted that proof and discussed it. Uh, I wrote in my blog, in a blog post entitled, Israel Goes in Search of a Scapegoat, Saudi-Israeli Alliance is a Recipe for Disaster. I predicted that they would eventually try to create a Saudi Israeli alliance, and I revealed the fact that the House of Saud were, in fact, crypto Jews. I did all this back in 2006, and in 2007, I predicted what is happening today. In its eagerness to destroy any and all efforts to unite Palestinians, Israel is encroaching upon Al-Aqsa Mosque so that the Palestinians will react and provide the Israelis with an excuse to invade Gaza and the West Bank and wipe out Hamas. So that's exactly what's happening today. Uh, Israel's controlled opposition of Hamas launched a barbaric assault on Israel called uh, Operation Al-Aqsa Flood. And I knew this was coming, and I talked about it again and again throughout, uh, from 2006 onwards, I've been discussing this. And I, among many others, have uh, pointed to uh, Moshe Charette's personal diary. Moshe Charette was prime minister of Israel, and he revealed the fact that a lot of the terrorism that takes place is false flag, and it's instigated by Israel itself in order to provide the Israelis with a pretext to wage war on the Palestinians and others. And in fact, to scare Jews into fleeing to um, Jews who otherwise would not do so, to making Aliyah, to uh, traveling to Israel and becoming Israeli citizens. The conclusion from Diane's words, Moshe Diane's words are clear, this state has no international obligations, no economic problems. The question of peace is non-existent. It must calculate its steps narrow-mindedly and live on its sword. It must see the sword as the main, if not the only instrument, with which to keep its morale high and to re retain its moral tension. Toward this end, it may, no, it must invent dangers. And to do this, it must adopt the method of provocation and revenge. This is exactly what's going on with Hamas and Netanyahu. And above all, let us hope for a new war with the Arab countries. Uh, Netanyahu has written about that and hoped for it all through the 90s until the present. He was constantly agitating for war, not only with Arab nations, but also with Iran, so that we may finally get rid of our troubles and acquire our space. Such a slip of the tongue. Ben-Gurion himself said that it would be worthwhile to pay an Arab a million pounds to start a war. And that was in his uh, diary entry of 26 May 1955. And Hamas is created by Israel and is providing them with pretext to start a war, as I predicted would happen in 2007. I predicted that. Uh, the Israelis have always pretended that they have... Uh, have um, taken over the god of Egypt, Seth Typhon, and made him the god of Israel. And therefore, they believe they have the right and are destined to inherit the ancient Egyptian empire of Ramses II, which extended from the Nile to the Euphrates. And they gave themselves that territory in Genesis chapter 15, verse 18, and the Zionists now call that greater Israel. And what it is, is an appropriation of all of the ancient 
Egyptian empire. And that includes not only all the lands of the Palestinians, but also the lands of the Lebanese, the Syrians, the Saudis, and the Egyptians. The, um, the Gaza Strip is actually the ancient, as I described in my previous video, the ancient territory of Philistia, the land of the Philistines. Palestinian is simply a variant spelling of the name Philistines, and the Palestinians call themselves the Philistines, and they have been congregated and segregated and driven into the ghetto of the Gaza Strip, which represents ancient Philistia. And all this is by design to um, trap the Palestinians, the Philistines, into Philistia so that Samson Netanyahu can come along and bring down the Temple of Humanity with the Samson option, destroy the temple by bringing down the buildings in the Gaza Strip onto the heads of the Palestinians, the Philistines, and eradicate them. And this is all simply an acting out of the story of Samson and the Philistines. This uh, in the red is Philistia, the uh, Palestinian states, Philistine, the Philistines. Uh, they talk about the, um, the kingdom of Judah, the kingdom of Edom. They also talk about Samaria as being the West Bank. So all of these are references to uh, ancient biblical scripts, and they are following those scripts as their plans, and they are setting about to destroy things, just as was uh, forecast and planned for in the Bible. And something to keep in mind as we go along is that Lebanon has two very ancient cities which are prominent in the Bible. And uh, the Bible calls for these cities to be destroyed. And the most important one we're going to be discussing is Tyre, Lebanon, and the king of Tyre, who is Satan, who is represented by Hassan Nasrallah. Another important city is Sidon. And in between Sidon and Tyre is the river Latani, which the Israelis are especially anxious to acquire as part of greater Israel. Uh, the kingdom of Damascus. There's a section in the Bible on woe to Damascus and the destruction of Damascus. Hezbollah is prominent in southern Lebanon and in Syria. So all of this relates to the prophecies of the destruction of Edom, the destruction of Tyre, the destruction of Sidon, and the destruction of Damascus. And Hamas and Hezbollah are playing into this script deliberately and um, as a part of their being set up by the Kabbalists. This is a more modern detailed map showing uh, Tyre, the Latani River, and Sidon. Keep those cities in mind, Sidon, Tyre, and Damascus. So now I'm going to run through and prove to you all of the things that I've been talking about and uh, how Egypt plays into this and how the United States is being manipulated as part of this script to fulfill these ancient plans which are commonly understood to be prophecies. But it is not the God of Israel, Seth Typhon, who is making these things happen. It is instead human beings, and these human beings can be stopped, and their plans can be thwarted, and part of thwarting those plans is understanding them and what's uh, taking place and how it is that the Kabbalists interpret and manufacture all of these events to follow the script, and I'm going to show you the script, and it's amazing. It's incredible. They are following it to the letter, to the very letter even to the names. You're going to be amazed about what Hassan Nasrallah means and how it fits in with what the Bible says. So Israel uh, got its behind whacked 
in the 2006 Lebanon war. And uh, prior to that, the Israeli army had always been presented as this great powerful force that was invincible. And um, these damn Amalekites showed that they were not only not invincible and not only could be fought back against, but could actually be defeated. And they were badly defeated in the Lebanon war. And that's why um, Olmert, who was in charge back then, was uh, casting barbs at Netanyahu. So the 2006 Lebanon War, which again is part of a series of civil wars uh, to attack Beirut and southern Lebanon and seize control of the Latani River by the Israelis. Uh, the principal parties were Hezbollah, paramilitary forces, and the IDF, Israeli Defense Forces. So what's going on now in part is to restore the fear of the Israeli army and its prestige. But I think this is going far beyond this. This is the fulfillment of the apocalyptic plans. Um, a big part of what is happening is they want to push and drive the Philistines out of Philistia and into Egypt. In modern terms, they want to drive the Palestinians, the over 2 million of them, uh, more than 50% of whom are children and babies. They want to drive them into Egypt. <clears throat> this has a precedent in Turkey's migrant crisis when 3.6 million Syrians were driven out of greater Israel into Turkey on their way to Europe. And the Kabbalists' ultimate goal is to drive all these people, including the Syrians and the Palestinians, into Europe so that the behemoth, the donkey, the Marxists and the Muslims can overwhelm the Leviathan, the ox, the Christian Europeans, and uh, defeat them in the battle, while at the same time destroying the behemoth itself so that Israel is left standing as the sole heir to the earth. But the, uh, the Egyptians have on their mind uh, Turkey's migrant crisis, and they don't want the Palestinians to be driven out of their homelands, their indigenous lands, and they don't want to have a migrant crisis the way that Turkey has endured a migrant crisis, and they don't know whether these plans will ever ultimately succeed in driving the Philistines at uh, the end of Samson's whip all the way into Europe, as they the Kabbalists would like to do. But uh, it's got to be on the minds of the Egyptians that the, the uh, Turkey's migrant crisis, the majority were refugees of the Syrian civil war, numbering 3.6 million as of June 2020. And uh, Turkey has gone through all kinds of strife as a result of this, and it has caused conflict between Turkey and the EU because Turkey wants to forward these people along into Europe, and the same situation is going on with Egypt. The Israelis and apologists for Israel frequently lie and claim that no other nations, especially not Arab or Muslim nations, have ever absorbed any of the Palestinians. And uh, they don't note the fact that the Israelis have no right whatsoever to drive indigenous Palestinians, the Philistines, out of Philistia, out of Palestine, and into other nations in the first place. But they try to scapegoat the rest of the world for what they're doing to commit genocide against the Palestinians by saying that it's the world's fault for not allowing them to chase these people out of their lands. But the, the reality is, is that millions of Palestinians reside in a forced diaspora and were driven out of the Holy Land just as uh, Jews were supposedly driven out of the Holy Land. Uh, and created a diaspora, but their diaspora already existed prior to what they say Titus did to them. Um, since the 1948 Arab-Israeli war, there are so many wars in this place that's supposed to be a holy place, but is instead uh, the seat of the destruction of humanity, Palestinians have experienced several waves of exile and have spread into different host countries 
around the world, in addition to the more than 700,000 Palestinian refugees of 1948, hundreds of thousands were also displaced in the 1967 Six-Day War, and it's many more. The numbers are incredible. According to the Palestinian Central Bureau of Statistics, the number of Palestinians worldwide at the end of 2003 was 9.6 million. How dare the Israelis claim that other nations have not absorbed these poor indigenous people who've been driven out of Palestine, out of Philistia, these Philistines that Samson keeps uh, mass murdering. Look at these figures. Jordan has 3,240,000, despite the Israeli apologist claims that no one is taking them in. Israel has uh, 1,650,000. Syria, 600,000. Chile, 500,000, half a million. Lebanon, 400,000. Saudi Arabia, almost 300,000. Egypt, nearly 300,000. The U.S., over 250,000, more than a quarter of a million. Same is true of Honduras, Guatemala, 200,000, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, the lies just, just never cease from the Israeli apologists. So now we're going to get into uh, the meat and potatoes of what is going on and why the U.S. is being drawn into this. Uh, they want the U.S. ships, the, uh, the largest aircraft carrier in the U.S. fleet and in the world, the, uh, I think it's the SS Gerald R. Ford, and uh, many other battleships and a whole other aircraft carrier, I think it's the Eisenhower, to serve as a platform for uh, airstrikes and missile strikes, especially against Hezbollah in southern Lebanon and in Syria, uh, most especially in the initial parts of this war, as well as to serve as a deterrent to others. But I think what they're really setting up is their ancient plans from the Old Testament. I'm going to show you those plans and how a foreign sea power was sent in to rescue the Israelis and provide them with safety when they stole the land of Philistia from the Philistines, from the Palestinians. So many of you are probably already aware of this, but uh, the U.S. is moving quickly to boost Israel's military. Look at what assistance it's providing. It's sending in these massive aircraft carriers with uh, airplanes and missiles that they can launch at Hezbollah so that Israel doesn't get its butt kicked the way it did in 2006. So let's start looking at uh, where these plans come from. Joel in the Old Testament says that um, now what you have uh, done against me, Tyre and Sidon, and all regions of Phil. Now what have you against me, Tyre and Sidon, and all you regions of Philistia? So that is the cities of Tyre and Sidon, which still exist in Lebanon, and that is Philistia, which is the Gaza Strip, and by extension, all of Palestine. Are you repaying me for something I have done? If you are paying me back, I will swiftly and speedily return on your heads what you have done. For you took my silver and my gold and carried off my finest temples to your treasures. The Old Testament in Zechariah and other places talks about all the silver and gold belonging to the God of Israel, which means that they're intending to hoard it all and put it in the temple of Solomon they're about to try to build. See, I am going to rouse them out of the places to which you sold them, and I will return on your own heads what you have done. I will sell your sons and daughters to the people of Ju Judah, meaning the Jews, and they will sell them to the Sabaeans, a nation far away. Proclaim this among the nations. 
prepare for war. We hear cries of preparing for war on both the Leviathan Atlantis side and the behemoth Eurasianist Marxist Muslim side. They're preparing for war. Rouse the warriors. Let all the fighting men draw near and attack. The battle groups of the U.S. Navy have drawn near and ready to attack. Uh, Hezbollah in Lebanon and Syria has drawn near and is ready to attack. Iran is issuing um, warnings that it is preparing and is ready to attack. Uh, Russia, etc., China, etc., etc., etc. We're getting there and it's about to happen. And I've been trying my best to lay this out. And my model that they follow these supposed prophecies as a script and as their plans has enabled me to perfectly predict the events that are happening today. So you, you should all go through and carefully read all of this. Uh, this is the plan. This is the plan that's being carried out. But Egypt will be desolate. Edom, a desert waste. Edom represents Europe. It represents America, all of Christendom, Australia, Canada, uh, all the nations where Europeans have spread out and formed their own countries. Because of violence done to the people of Judah, in whose lands they shed innocent blood, Judah will be inhabited forever, and Jerusalem through all generations. Remember uh, Messiah, son of Joseph? Donald Trump proclaiming that uh, Jerusalem is the eternal capital of the Jews. Shall I leave their innocent blood unavenged? No, I will not. That vengeance is about to take place. They are planning to exterminate us. I hope people see that these are their precise plans that they are carrying out to the letter in Tyre, Sidon, and Philistia, and they're drawing in Edom, the West, um, to sucker them into killing off the people of Tyre and Sidon and the uh, Philistines, the Palestinians, and then they're going to kill off these Edomites who did their bidding and effectively committed suicide by helping and enabling them. Uh, Amos chapter 1, verses 9 through 10. This is what the Lord says, for three sins of Tyre, even for four, and there are rabbinical uh, glosses on why it's three, even four, that are very important that I won't go into. I will not relent, because she sold whole communities of captives to Edom, disregarding a treaty of brotherhood to the Kabbalists. This represents Rome invading. This represents uh, the French and other colonies, English colonies in the Middle East. I will send fire on the walls of Tyre that will consume her fortresses. They have repeatedly bombed Beirut and parts of Lebanon into ruins over and over again, all according to their ancient plans. Zechariah chapter 9, verses 1 to 4. A prophecy, the word of the Lord is against the land of Hadrach and will come to rest on Damascus. There's a woe of Damascus. They, they, they're really going to go after them. For the eyes of all people and all the tribes of Israel are on the Lord and on Hamath too, which borders on it, and on Tyre and Sidon. Though they are very skillful, they were skillful enough to drive back the Israelis in 2006 and expose the weakness of the Israeli army, which is their biggest fear. Tyre has built herself a stronghold. She has heaped up silver like dust and gold like the dirt of the streets. Uh, Beirut used to be known as the Riviera or the Paris of the Middle East. It was an incredibly beautiful, prosperous city, and they, they just go after it again and again to ruin it. But the Lord will take away her possessions and destroy her power on the sea. We have the U.S., not the Lord, who has arrived with battle groups of battleships. 
and she will be consumed by fire, and they're there to blow the crap out of Lebanon and Syria. Uh, Ezekiel chapters 26 to 28 are perhaps the most important part of all of this because they really set up uh, what they call the prophecy, a prophecy against Tyre. And in chapter 28, which we're going to get to, it shows that has Hassan Nasrallah is Satan in the eyes of the Kabbalists and is doing exactly what they want him to do to provide them with a pretext for annihilating once again the Lebanese. Chapter 26, in the 11th month, the 12th year, on the first day of the month, boy, they're specific, the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, because of Tyre has said of Jerusalem, aha, the gate to the nations is broken and its doors have swung open to me. Now that she lies in ruins, I will prosper. Their prosperity is based upon destroying others. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I am against you, Tyre, and I will bring many nations against you. The U.S. is poised to wage war on Tyre and Lebanon and Syria. Like the sea casting up its waves, and it has arrived as naval battle groups and aircraft carriers. They will destroy the walls of Tyre and to the Kabbalists. This means all the places where uh, Hezbollah is entrenched and pull down her towers. They bombed Beirut many times. I will scrape away her rubble and make her a bare rock. Out in the sea, she will become a place to spread fish nets. For I have spoken, declares the sovereign Lord. She will become plunder for the nations and her settlements on the mainland will be ravaged by the sword. Then they will know that I am the Lord. The colonists have returned. The Americans and Europeans are back to wage war. And again, I hope that people understand these are not prophecies coming from God. And I am in no way implying that this is the fulfillment of prophecy. Quite the contrary. I'm saying that prophecy cannot be fulfilled by the God of Israel, which does not exist. And instead, uh, the Israelites, the Christians, the Muslims, the communists, the Marxists, the Eurasianists, uh, the British imperialists, the American imperialists, everyone is playing this out and following this script by design because they've been ordered to do so. We have politicians who have been blackmailed and compromised and have no soul. We have psychopaths in power and they are being ordered to bring this out in fulfillment of these plans. They are not prophecies. They are plans, as I've been saying for 25, 30 years. Um, Ezekiel chapter 27, son of man, take up a lament concerning Tyre. Men of Persia, that means the Iranians, served as soldiers in your army, Hezbollah, the army of Tyre is closely affiliated with the Persians, the Iranians. Damascus did business with you because of your many products and great wealth of goods. Damascus, Syria is in the crosshairs. It's part of greater Israel and they have their uh, prophecies, plans of woe to Damascus. The merchants among the nations scoff at you. You have come to a horrible end and will be no more. Please, people, join with me. Let's not let this happen. Let's not let the beautiful people of Lebanon be destroyed. Let's not let any people be destroyed. Let's bring this calamity to an end and stop Netanyahu and his crew, his crew in Washington, his crew in Moscow, his crew in Beijing. Let's not let them destroy us and uh, make it so that we meet a horrible end and exist no more. So the head of Hezbollah for quite some time is Hassan Nasrallah. And it's very interesting what the name Hassan Nasrallah means. Hassan Nasrallah. 
Hassan means handsome, good, or benefactor. Pay attention especially to handsome. He is handsome. He has beauty. Nasrallah means victory of God. So we have the handsome victory of God identifying a man in the minds of the Kabbalists as a man who portrays himself as God. In other words, is Satan. And uh, Hesran, Hassan, I'm sorry, Nasrallah is being played out by the Kabbalists to play the role of Satan, the king of Tyre. And that Satan dupes the world into fulfilling these plans and hands over the world to the Israelites. And this is spelled out in Ezekiel chapter 28, which talks about the king of Tyre and reveals the fact that he is Satan, the fallen, beautiful, handsome uh, Hassan angel who believes that he is God, the victory of God, Nasrallah. A prophecy against the king of Tyre. That king of Tyre is being played by Hassan Nasrallah, the uh, leader of Hezbollah. Son of man, say to the ruler of Tyre, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Uh, in the pride of your heart, you say, I am God, Nasrallah, victory of God. I sit on the throne of a God in the heart of the seas. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I am going to bring foreigners against you. Americans have been brought against Hezbollah, the most ruthless of nations. U.S. has slaughtered millions of people in the Middle East at the behest of Israel. It's one of the greatest crimes humanity has ever committed. They will draw their swords against your beauty beauty, handsome, Hassan, and wisdom, and pierce your shining splendor. They will bring you down to the pit, the pit of hell, which is the kingdom of Satan. And you will die a violent death in the heart of the seas. The aircraft carrier Ford and Eisenhower uh, bringing death from the heart of the seas. You will then say, I am a God in the presence of those. Will you then say, I am a God in the presence of those who kill you? Again, victory of God. The king of Tyre thinks that he is God because he is the fallen angel Satan who wants to create a kingdom of his own and to kill God and become God of the universe. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, take up a lament concerning the king of Tyre and say to him, You were the seal of perfection. This is describing uh, the right hand of God, Lucifer, the highest angel in heaven, the first angel created, and the great beauty of God who fell. You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden in the garden of God. Who was in Eden? Who was not Adam and Eve? Satan was in Eden. Every precious stone adorned you, etc., etc. Uh, you were anointed as a guardian cherub, for so I ordained you. You were on the holy mount of God. So I drove you in disgrace from the mount of God, the throne of the Lord, and I expelled you, guardian cherub, from among the fiery stones. Your heart became proud on account of your beauty, handsomeness, Hassan. And you corrupted your wisdom, the wisdom of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the wisdom of primordial chaos. Because of your splendor, your beauty, your Hassan. So I threw you to the earth. He is the chief of the fallen angels. 
described in Genesis chapter 6 and in uh, the book of Enoch. By your many sins and dishonest trade, you have desecrated your sanctuaries. So I made a fire come out of you, and it consumed you, and I reduced you to ashes on the ground in the sight of all who were watching. All the nations who knew you are appalled at you. You have come to a horrible end and will be no more. The U.S. battle group is preparing to uh, launch airstrikes and missiles at Hassan, Hassan Nasrallah. Uh, the beauty and victory of God, Satan in the minds of the Kabbalists. A prophecy against Sidon. Set your face against Sidon. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, set your face against Sidon. Prophecy against her and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I am against you, Sidon. I will send plague upon you and make blood flow in your streets. The slain will fall within you with a sword against you on every side. Ever since Israel has been formed, uh, Lebanon, Beirut, Tyre, Sidon have all been under perpetual attack and the blood has flown again and again and is about to flow again and again unless the American people demand that Biden step out of this nightmare and stop spilling blood in our name with our taxpayer dollars. No longer will the people of Israel have malicious neighbors. That's what this is all about. Wiping out all the peoples of greater Israel so that Israel has hegemony, not only over the Middle East, but over the entire world, and pits us against each other so that we kill, kill each other off. And we're obliging it. it. It's incredible to me that we're obliging it. I've been screaming about this for 20 years. Please, people, start listening and don't just listen. We need to organize and we need to act. We can stop this. We need to take political action to uh, stop Blinken and uh, his crew in the White House from uh, killing more people in our name with our tax dollars. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. When I gather the people of Israel from the nations where they have been scattered, I will be proved holy through them in the sight of the nations, proved holy by slaughtering everyone. Then they will live in their own land, which I gave to my servant Jacob. They will live there in safety. This is the premise of everything that's taking on, uh, occurring today. The premise is, is that Israel has to be rendered safe from Hamas and Hezbollah and Iran and from all the Muslims and all the Arabs and all the Persians and it's the US the foreign power that's being brought in from the sea to create this safety for the Israelites this was always the plan it is being pursued not because Israel has been legitimately attacked by its neighbors but instead Israel has set up controlled opposition groups to wage false flag terror against Israel so that Israel can cry foul, bring in the subverted U.S. as its hammer of Judas Maccabee to smash all of these innocent people and spill the blood of millions more. Proved uh, holy through them in the sight of the nations, then they will live in their own land, which I gave to my servant Jacob. They will live there in safety, and I will build houses and plant vineyards. They will live in safety when I inflict punishment on all their neighbors who malign them. Then they will know that I am the Lord their God. Yeah, they know that uh, the God of Israel rules because the God of Israel has killed them all. And the U.S. is playing that role. We don't need to play that role. We need to stop playing that role. This is a script. This is not what is happening by the power of God. This is what is happening by the power of, uh, well, you know the power. <laughs> so another aspect of this that I wanted to uh, touch upon that was important in this biblical script is the idea that they are about to build a third temple of Solomon. 
Uh, first one never existed. Second one was probably not in this area if it ever existed. Uh, but um, Ezra chapter 3 verse 7 indicates that uh, Sidon and Tyre are important for providing the cedar logs used to build the temple and otherwise uh, assisting in the construction of the third temple, which is a part of this whole script. Then they gave money to the masons and carpenters and gave food and drink and olive oil to the people of Sidon and Tyre so that they would bring cedar logs by sea from Lebanon and Joppa as authorized by Cyrus, king of Persia. This is how they are repaying the Persians for all their assistance. They're repaying them by um, threatening to drop nuclear bombs on Tehran and completely exterminate the Iranian people. Uh, First Chronicles chapter 22 verse 4 states, He also provided more cedar logs than can be counted, for the Sidonians and Tyrians had brought large numbers of them to David for the construction of the temple. I once again uh, deeply want to thank everyone who has contributed some very generously. Thank you so much. Uh, you've saved me. Uh, thank you, Gary, Carolus, Wilson, Basma, Gregory, Kevin, Lance, Robert, Carolina, Mark, and Matthias. Anyone who would like to contribute, um, you can do so at my website, cjbbooks.com. There will also be links in the description below. Much more importantly than that, uh, please understand my model works. Um, I have been making public accurate predictions for decades which have come true to the letter. That is not because I'm a prophet. That is not because I have written these plans. It is instead because I understand that the people in power are utilizing this script, which is dubbed prophecy, as a set of plans, and they are following it to the letter. And that set of plans calls for them to attack Tyre and Sidon, meaning all of Lebanon, and to attack Damascus, meaning Syria, and to uh, impose the woe of Sidon and the destruction of the people of Lebanon from a foreign sea power, which is obviously the U.S., to exterminate the uh, Philistines, the Palestinians of Philistia, of the Gaza Strip, to take over Egypt from the Nile and to take over the kingdom of Egypt from the Nile to the Euphrates and create greater Israel. That's the plan. That's always been the plan. They are carrying it out. They are using the military might of America. They are utilizing Americans to kill innocent babies, uh, women, children. And uh, we got to stop it, please. We got to stop it. This, this isn't entertainment. This isn't uh, just to show that you are the avant-garde, that you know what's going on. We now that you know, we all together have a duty to do something. And ultimately, there's a very selfish concern in this because the ultimate end of this is that we are to be exterminated, all of us. So we owe it to ourselves, to our families, to our children, to our future generations to take action, to defend ourselves. We have the playbook. We know the script. We know what they're up to. We can prove this. We can show that we are in mortal danger. We are in the crosshairs. Their ambition is to exterminate, it, exterminate us. So we have the right to take political action, to fight back against all of this and bring it to a close. And then we can have a big, beautiful world. We can stop polluting the atmosphere. We can stop geoengineering the atmosphere, which is also part of this script.
We can stop poisoning the food. We can stop trying to manufacture human beings as homunculi in laboratories. We can lead normal lives and start being human again, restore nature, stop hating the world, stop believing that the earth is hell, stop hating one another and destroying one another. And uh, most importantly, each individual nation can secure its own individual interests and provide for its own people instead of waging war against one another at the behest of these evil people who are following this evil script. And I want people to understand that these prophecies are not being fulfilled by the God of Israel. They are being fulfilled by a small group of very evil people who take this as their script. Thank you again for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Please spread word about my videos, about my books. Get people to understand this information. I have some important interviews coming up, so watch for that. Take care of yourselves, and let's start taking care of humanity together and end this war on one another. Bye for now. I'll see you next time.